Yeah, yeah. no, thanks, Coach. Um, yeah, I mean, the main thing, guys, I guess my story in general, uh, you know, I was an Olympic track and field uh, runner. Um, I turned pro after graduating from UCLA in uh, 2005, so uh, over um, about 15 years ago. But, you know, my, my story in terms of how I got to where I was um, as, you know, becoming basically the greatest middle distance runner in UCLA history, one of the top milers in U.S. history, uh, the greatest middle distance runner in the Cayman Islands history. Those things happened not because uh, necessarily just because I was talented. It be, happened because I was, you know, I had a dream and I was willing to work on that dream. And there are going to be tons and tons of obstacles throughout your, your entire life, you know, throughout your journey towards whatever those dreams that you have are. But I guarantee you, and the thing that I tell kids today and tell adults as well, um, if you're alive and you have a dream, you, there's a chance for it to come true. And it's important that you focus on chasing those dreams, not because they're going to come true, but because it's going to make you happy. You know, you're going to go through tough times. And, and, and this is obviously the craziest time that I could ever imagine going through where the entire world is come to a complete halt, literally, you know, and that's hard to believe. It's just hard to imagine, you know, uh, that, that everything is stopped and everybody now is inside, uh, you know, separated from one another. And. Thank goodness for technology, you know, thank goodness for the opportunity and the ability to uh, connect with one another without actually having to be um, in the same country, much less the same house, you know, or the same place. But at the end of the day, you know, what's what's so important about this time is that um, you do take the time to truly connect. I mean, even being able to see each other's faces right now is a really big deal because, um, you know, just talking over the phone as nice as that is, but when you can see the person's face, it changes the dynamic of the conversation. It changes the dynamic of the experience that you're having connecting with that other person. Um, I think it's important to take time to do that. But I also think it's very important, like I was saying earlier, to take time to really work on yourselves because you are going to have moments, even when there isn't something as crazy as a global pandemic, where you're going to have to Take the time to focus on yourself, to be with yourself, to be alone with your thoughts. And honestly, throughout the day, even even when you're around people, you're dealing with that that voice in your head all the time, talking to you and telling you all kinds of stuff. A lot of times it's negative. And we all know that we're, we're, we're usually saying a lot of negative stuff to ourselves, saying what we're not good at, what we're falling short on, what we wish we had, all these things. And those things are not helpful at all. They are counterproductive. Um, so I can only imagine how much worse it gets when you're put into a box, so to speak, psychologically and also now physically. And you're challenged to think about yourself and your dreams and where you're not and what you don't have and what you wish you had. I encourage all of you to flip the way that you're looking at it, though. Uh, Coach said it earlier. He said something about... You know, your attitude is your choice. Um, whether or not your dreams come true are also your choice, believe it or not. It's a choice to believe whether or not you can actually achieve the dreams that you have. And even more than that, it's, it's a choice whether or not you choose to actually go after your dreams. It's your choice whether or not you choose to go after your dreams. So if you choose to wait for the perfect situation, if you choose for somebody to help you out instead of taking the initiative. If you choose for things to be in a better place in your life instead of going for it right now, I guarantee you, you will never do it because there will always be an excuse. There will always be an excuse. Something will always come up. If it isn't a global pandemic, it's going to be something else. You know what I mean? It's always going to be things that are going to discourage you from going after your dreams. In my opinion, the most important thing that you can do with your life is to pursue the things that make you happy, to pursue the things that you truly want to do with your life and that you would love to do and make money doing it, but that you would gladly do it for free. That's the stuff that you have to go after because at some point, your life is over, right? So at some point, you're not going to have the chance to do it. So right now is the, the best time to do it. It really is. And in this very, very moment, in this moment in history, you have an opportunity 
to really make that choice and that commitment to the thing that you want. And I am on a mission to tell every single person that I come into contact with that the thing that I discovered when I chased my dreams is that the more I chased them, the more I believed that I could do it, the more it started to work out, even when I couldn't see it working out. It was working out for me because I was putting so much into it. It was stuff was happening in, 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 you know, in the universe, behind the scenes. People were conspiring in my favor because they saw how hard I was working. They saw the talent that I was putting on display. They saw the potential. There was so much energy going into that thing that I wanted, that I was dreaming about, that it was already happening without me even seeing it without me even knowing it. So when I was injured for three years in college, my freshman year, I won the junior national title. I was the top um, uh, junior 1500 meter runner in the entire United States. I won the title. And so everybody's like, oh my gosh, this kid who was a walk-in at UCLA is gonna now, he's the future uh, for our sport. I didn't get a scholarship, by the way. I walked onto that team. I was recruited, but I was not given any money. So I paid my way through school. Then I went on to become the greatest middle distance runner in UCLA history. But I also was injured for three years after that successful freshman year, I was injured for three years, seven stress fractures. Talk about not getting the run. And I had all this expectation and all this hope. And also I was this kind of person that when I said I was gonna do something, I was gonna do it. So it was really, really hard when I was injured, stress fracture after stress fracture after stress reaction, again and again and again, you know, left tibia, right tibia, left foot, left metatarsal, uh, bones were breaking, couldn't run. I was in the pool, I was on the bike. Everybody else was traveling. All my teammates were doing their things. I was isolated up on the hill, away from the team, away from the track, working out in the, in the, in the dungeon, uh, or on the bike, spinning, elliptical. That sucks, man. That was terrible. I was in a box. But the psychological aspect of that challenge was really the most important part of it because imagine if I just gave up completely. I was frustrated. I can't, I'm not gonna lie, it was hard. But imagine if I didn't even, didn't even do the work. Like I busted my butt. I busted my butt the entire time I was in the pool. I was throwing up after every pool workout. Y'all push yourself, ever push yourself that hard in a cross training workout that you threw up, that you would throw up and get sick because you, you built up so much lactic acid that your body was like feeling like it was going through an actual track workout, like an actual race. Have you ever pushed yourself that hard? In the abnormal, you know, uh, approach to your training, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you have to do right now. You need to push yourself. You need to come out of this thing stronger. And when I went, came out of the pool, when I finally got off the bike and off the elliptical, and I didn't have to do it all the time, and I was actually able to run again, I was actually able to run at the highest level. I came out and my fifth year, it was amazing. What happened? I go from an obscure runner that was pretty good to becoming an All-American in cross country, to help my run, anchoring my team to a second place at, at nationals indoors in the DMR, and then coming outdoors and Within a few weeks of the outdoor season starting, I ran the fastest time in the world. Went from nobody to the number one runner in the world in the mile. Out of the pool, off the bike, off the elliptical, living in a box. It's possible. Don't waste this time. This is not a vacation. This is your opportunity to get serious about what it is that you really want. And then you're, and this is your moment to make the decision to commit to what it is that you're going to do to get there. This is your time. And if you don't take advantage of it now, I guarantee you, you will regret it. And there's no point in not doing it. There's so much time in the day. Why wouldn't you do the work? Don't wait until you're 38 to go after your dreams. I'm 38. Thankfully, I didn't wait to go after one of my dreams, but I have more dreams. And now I'm going after the dream of becoming a motivational speaker, a mentor, a teacher, a coach, and giving back the most important thing that I've gained from chasing my dreams, 
which is the courage to live my life fully, not living in a box. Because even when you're not living in a box, most of us live in a box. Most of us choose not to go for it because we need the job. We need the income. I got to support a family. I got to do this. I got to do that. It's all excuses. All of it is just excuses. If you really want it, you'll do it. I'll give you a simple analogy. When you really want in and out, you will do everything you can to go get it. You will get up, drive, find the extra 10 bucks, maybe look in your couch, find some change. You will find a way to get that double-double animal style with some fries and a nice Coca-Cola with some ice or a milkshake. I guarantee you, you'll do it because you really want it. You're, you're, you're craving it. Treat your dreams the same way. Because this stuff bothers you. I know it does. It bothers all of us. I just released a video on YouTube, uh, my team. So I have a company called Go Be More. Uh, that's what this, this is all about, this hoodie. We create an inspirational apparel uh, with the words Go Be More on it. The video that uh, we just released today is called How to Solve uh, the, Today's Global Issues. And on the thumbnail that I use for the video, it says, your dreams are the solution. The reason why I say your dreams are the solution is that I believe, and I know this is true, and I know that you guys, especially your generation, you guys want to have an impact on the world, and you know that the only way to solve the problems of today and to have new problems, which is a good thing when you have new problems, we all should want new problems. It means we're making progress in life and we're getting rid of the old problems instead of living in the same place for years and years and years at a time. I don't want the same problem I had when I was five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old. I want a new problem. I want new problems. The only way to solve the, 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 the issues of today, though, I guarantee you, the only way, the long-term solution is to chase your dreams. It's the only solution. If people are living the lives that they truly imagine for themselves and they're happy and they're pursuing their passions and they're being creative and they're contributing to the world in that way, they'll inspire their kids, they'll inspire their families, they'll inspire their friends, their teammates, their schools, their communities, their states, their countries and the world. We see it in small glimpses all the time. They're called iconic figures, icons. You know, but we're, we can all be icons. Don't have to be global to be an icon. You need to chase your dreams to be an icon in the eyes of those that see it and witness it. It's like a shooting star. And we need that. We need you guys, especially your generation. I do not want the way the world is today to be the way the world is tomorrow for my four-year-old daughter and for my stepkids, my stepson and stepdaughter. I do not want the world the way it is today to be the way it is tomorrow. So I gotta spend the rest of my life trying to fix the problems of my generation and the generations past before us to at least put you guys in a better position to solve these problems. Because these problems, they're old news. It's enough. You know, climate change, human rights, violence against women, economic inequality, unacceptable. This is stuff you guys are gonna have to deal with. Shouldn't we have solved this stuff by now? Yeah. But if you guys don't chase your dreams, those problems are gonna still exist. The reason why they exist today is because of apathy. People don't care because they don't have the life that they want, so why would they help anybody else? Who cares? That's what they say. It doesn't affect my life. Of course it does. But the light ain't making my life any better, so why should I do anything about it? That's what everybody says. Why? Because they're unhappy with their own lives. Everybody's busy trying to get theirs. So they don't want to give back. That's why they're skeptical of charity and philanthropy and the government and everything else. 
The only way to change that is if you guys, your generation, gets into government, gets into leadership, pursues your dreams, goes for it, make mistakes, fall short, get up and keep going. It makes everything better. And when people are pursuing their dreams, they are truly making the world a better place because they will also, just alongside of those dreams as they're pursuing their dreams and they're walking that path, they too are gonna be more willing to make, make contributions to their community and to the country and to the, and to the global society as a, as a greater whole. Because they have the energy, the emotion, the, 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 the concern, because they're full of energy. You tap into this source when you chase your dreams. You want to make a difference. If you do not chase your dreams, the problems that we see today will be the problems that you'll face and that you'll be affected by tomorrow. I guarantee it. We all need to chase our dreams. We all need to go be more every single day of our lives. The moment we become complacent, the moment we start to fall backwards and go backwards and fall into the problems and fall into the space that we live in right now, where those problems get to flourish and become huge hindrances to progression as a global society. I have this saying with Go Be More that, uh, just like the gingerbread man, so the logo is this little runner guy, this little gingerbread guy. And what he's doing is in the fairy tale, we're born into, I believe that we're, I, I took the, from this fairy tale that what the cookie was experiencing. So he's this little cookie, he's born into the world and, and the little old lady wants to eat him. He was made just, he was born just to be eaten. But this fairy tale character become, comes to life, right? He becomes hashtag more than a cookie more than a cookie. He runs out the window and he starts running down this path and he's pursuing something more. He wants to go be more, GBM, gingerbread man. That's where it came from. Because he wanted to go be more. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're born into a world that wants to tell us who we are, that wants to consume our dreams before we even have a chance to chase them, to, to fulfill them, to identify them and to become who we were born to be. That cookie didn't want to do that. And I said to myself, man, if a little cookie can do it, we can do it. Because we're just like him. We're born into a world that wants to tell us who we are and that wants to consume our dreams. And before we even have a chance, is telling us who we are and what we're supposed to be. No more. No more. That's my message. That's what I've discovered. So I said, I got to tell everybody that. Of course, I can't physically be everywhere at once. So I said, I'm going to create something that can. A t-shirt. A hat, shoes, apparel, you know. I want to be everywhere. I want to connect with everybody. But this is the only way to physically do it is to create physical uh, objects and hand it out, give it out, sell it. Create, an, create a way for me to connect with all of you without physically being there. And when you, when you go be more, just like this character who is being chased by everybody, you guys remember what he would say when he's running by the cow or the pig or the old man or something that's trying to chase him? Do you remember what he tells them? He says, you can run, run as fast as you can, but you can't catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. He knows who he is. He knows who he is. And he tells you, and he says, you can't catch a person that's chasing their dreams that knows what they're going after. You can't fool them. You can't convince them. You can't tell them. Anything that doesn't align with their dreams, they will tell you whether or not it works for them. They will not be distracted or denied. They will go be more and they will become what the world is chasing. And I hope that all of you guys will take a moment to identify the dreams that keep you up at night, the dreams that you daydream about during the day. I hope that you guys will come out of the stronger and I hope that all of you will become what the world is chasing too.